Americans for Fair Taxation presents the Weekly Chairman's Report, written by Steve Hayes, President of Americans for Fair Taxation, and recorded by Bob Paxton, a volunteer with the Florida Fair Tax Educational Association. And now, this week's Chairman's Report. Hello, I'm Bob Paxton with the AFFT Chairman's Report for Friday, June 14th, 2024. Why taxing corporations is a really bad idea, unless you want to hide who's really paying. One of the loudest complaints raised against the fair tax is that it would abolish the corporate income tax. Now, according to DC elite thinking, it's absolutely unconscionable that billions of dollars of corporate profits would go completely untaxed. These elites sincerely believe that these mega rich corporations have an obligation to pay their fair share. An April 23, 2024 op-ed in the Wall Street Journal by Phil Graham and Mike Solon entitled, Who Pays Corporate Taxes? Look in the Mirror. Costs are passed on to consumers. If you work for and invest in companies, you get hit three times. Here are some of the points they made. Americans just don't understand that corporations don't pay taxes. A corporate entity is owned by its shareholders. That's you and me. Now, corporate taxes are just like any other cost of doing business. When costs go up, the increase gets passed on to a number of different people in a number of different ways. To the degree that the entire cost of the tax increase can't be passed on to consumers, those increased costs are borne by employees and investors. Most economic studies conclude that 50 to 70 percent of a corporate tax increase is not passed on at higher prices, but is borne by workers, while 30 to 50 percent is borne by investors. If you consume, you pay the corporate tax. If you consume and work for a corporation, you pay the corporate tax twice. If you consume, work, and invest your retirement funds in corporate equities, then the corporate tax hits you three times. Democrats like to portray big corporations as being run by greedy robber barons. But when you pull back the curtain, it isn't the wizard or a robber baron you see, but you see yourself as a consumer, a worker, and a pensioner. A recent Treasury study confirms that 92.6 million families, that's 49.5% of all American families, pay more in the corporate taxes that are hidden in the prices of the things they buy than they pay in individual income taxes. President Biden's proposed corporate tax increases would raise taxes on more low- and moderate-income American families than if he raised individual income tax rates. And we must never forget that the corporate tax is a tax on everything we buy, a tax on our wages, and a tax on our retirement nest eggs. In conclusion, there are some facts about how D.C. acts that are clear to anyone who bothers to look. All their actions are intended to hide the true cost of the income payroll tax system and the increased regulation from the American people. To distract attention from their numerous failures by creating tensions between the American people over fairness. To divert attention away from their own failures by blaming greedy corporations and individuals for not paying as they should and trying to convince us that making these scoundrels pay their fair share would actually reduce our tax burden and convince the American people that the problems we face today are just too tough for ordinary people to solve, that we'd be better off leaving the problem solving to them because they're so much smarter than the rest of us and that they would use their superior knowledge and intellect to take care of us. (coughs) Yeah. Note to DC, more and more the American people are waking up to just how bad a job you're doing. People are realizing that higher corporate taxes mean that we all pay the tax in the form of higher prices. The people who work for the corporation pay the tax in the form of lower or stagnant wages and reduced benefits, that is, if they're lucky enough not to get laid off. Higher taxes make a company less profitable. That reduces the value of their stock and negatively impacts our retirement accounts. The fair tax is an honest tax. Everyone sees exactly what keeping the federal government running is costing them. The D.C. elite's worst nightmare is that people will discover the extent of their mishandling and corruption. When the people figure out that they're not getting their money's worth, there will be an uprising at the polls. Now, there's an elegant solution to all these tax problems. Pass the fair tax. Under the fair tax, we keep all of our paychecks. We clearly see the cost of government with every purchase, and we'll all know the real cost of the government that we're paying for. 
the economy and government tax revenues will grow much more rapidly. Budget cuts are still required to stop expanding the national debt, but will not need to be as painful. With a fair tax, interest costs on the national debt will come down, and the total will again be less than we pay for defense spending. Rates for mortgages, car loans, and credit card loans will quickly come down. All Americans will be more prosperous and confident about their future, and Social Security and Medicare will be fully solvent. No senior will ever have to worry about having their retirement income reduced because of the inability to finance the national debt. The solution? Pass the fair tax. Now, why would D.C. pass the fair tax and give up an almost unlimited source of donations? Well, they won't, at least not voluntarily. The only way they will is if the rest of us demand it. Isn't it time to end this ludicrous tax collection system and the IRS along with it? Now, there's going to be a vote on the fair tax in the House of Representatives. We now have the opportunity to force all members of the House to show where they stand. They can vote for the President Income Payroll Tax System, or they can vote for the fair tax. They can support the corrupt income tax in the IRS, or they can vote to eliminate it. It can't be any simpler than that. They can hide the true cost of their government, or pass the fair tax and show everyone the true cost of government on every retail receipt. And finally, they can support the largest transfer of power from the government to the people, the fair tax, or they can vote against it. Now, if members think the fair tax needs to be amended to address a problem, then they can propose the change. Don't let them get away with rejecting the entire bill because it has a perceived flaw that can be easily addressed. And don't think for an instant there aren't any flaws in the income tax. Help bring about real tax reform and stop future IRS abuses. By contributing or investing $10.40 a month, you help provide a financial base to Americans for fair taxation. Now, if you can make larger contributions slash investments, these will be used not for salaries as we're all volunteers, but for the needed updates to our economic studies, which will be vital for all future years. Please go to fairtax.org to invest in AFFT and help us pass the fair tax. It's an investment in your and your family's future. This has been the Weekly Chairman's Report, written by Steve Hayes, President of Americans for Fair Taxation. Check back every week for news and information about the fair tax and learn why the fair tax should replace our antiquated federal income tax system. If you'd like to receive a copy of the Chairman's Report in your inbox every week, sign up at fairtax.org. 